All right, former Anambra state governor and presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter B, has proclaimed that um, President Bola Tinubu should be in the Guinness World Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship. Now, Peter B, who mentioned that he had put behind him the 2023 general elections, and he was now focusing on governance and real issues. Um, in an interview, uh, he noted that Nigerians on the streets could judge the performance of the Tinubu administration so far since May 2023. Now, do recall that Tinubu had in, re had in recent times bragged that uh, he deserved to be included in the Guinness World Records over his performance in the country since he assumed leadership. The um, key point was removing uh, fuel subsidy. Yes. Obi reacting to that statement said, don't forget that people's names don't always make it into the Guinness World Records for, uh, only for unselfish reasons. So it depends on which angle he's coming from. Well, if the idea is to put his name in the Guinness World Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship, the most untold hardship, of course, he is spot on. And uh, he goes on to say that I will totally agree with him because his reforms are not achieving what they are meant to achieve. So he may actually be correct when he claims that his name deserves to be in the Guinness World Records. Well, in a recent development, a Minister of Works, David Omahi, um, said to, well, he did say that President Bolatinibu has sleepless nights over the very bad economy he inherited from his predecessor, Muhammadu Buhari, emphasizing the need for Nigerians to do their bit uh, while leadership also does its own bit, which is the only way forward. All right, uh, we'll, we'll look at this and uh, other recent activities that the Tinubu administration has undertaken. And uh, we still have with us Mr. Aki Fatunke, who is a chartered accountant and a public affairs commentator. And we also do have uh, John Akirili, uh, who is uh, a farmer, was a farmer, and uh, a public affairs commentator. Well, I do understand that John will join the conversation uh, much later. But in the meantime, let's uh, stay with you, Mr. Fatunke. Now, the president, yes, the president made the statement that he made about being in the Guinness World Records. But the major concern now on the hearts of Nigerians is the fact that insecurity has not abated. In fact, it seems to be increasing. The number of deaths from insecurity, uh, you know, has from May 2023 up until December was going into thousands already. And in January alone, we have seen more kidnappings. We have seen more uh, deaths. And some Nigerians are saying, why would the president jet out of the country at a time that there is insecurity in the country? His presence alone might just give, you know, some sort of relief to those in the troubled region. I mean, insecurity has spread around the country, really, from, from, from kidnappers going into homes to one-chance vehicles taking people and siphoning money from them. Is that the time, really? I mean, for one who wants his name in the Guinness Book of Records, for whatever reason, is this the time to go to uh, Paris, France, without a tangible reason being given to Nigerians? The way you have couched it, perhaps, uh, uh, lends credence to what uh, Mr. Peter Greg DOB uh, has labeled as being a bit insensitive, I dare say. I don't know why he's gone out there. Um, the suspicion is perhaps for health reasons. And if that is so, why is that not being disclosed? And these are part of things that I see with us, uh, with the black skin, especially here in Nigeria. Why do we need to hide? Uh, if you are not fit, you are not fit and you are, have to jet out because your health institutions, as an example, are not in top shape. So Mr. Peter Gregory is, is right. 
from the insensitivity aspect. I want to get away from the politics. Uh, if the shoe were to be on the other foot, I am very sure that uh, Mr. Balatinumbu would be much more virulent okay, in attacking whoever. Um, mm. I just give this example of Peter Obi. If Peter Obi were to be the president of Nigeria, okay, um, Atiku were to be the president of Nigeria, uh, the problems are there. So forget about it. What would you have done differently? And that is where the opposition, in my mind, needs to be much more proactive. We had an opposition in this country, and the clear example I like to give is Awolowo and Eshagari. For every criticism that was in the public space, Awolowo had a template to say, this is what I will do. I haven't seen that uh, in what Mr. Peter Obi and um, Atiku and the rest are doing. I don't, you don't think, think they're doing that already. No, no, I'm not. What will you do? Okay, so um, you got in there and you found that um, on May 29, there is uh, no allocation for subsidy. And mm -hmm. you even said it. Uh, but everybody, virtually all everybody the, said yeah, it. All the and so you got there. So what are you going to do? You keep on borrowing? Or you try and see how to... Look, all I'm just trying to say is that uh, criticism is good to put the fire under the feet of whoever. What I have seen is the example, okay? The good example, I've just mentioned just one. Um, the good example, what we have done differently. Who are you going to be looking at to help you resolve? Have you gotten the right people in place? So if opposition is now saying, oh, I will have thought of this, I will have thought of that, this is what I will have thought of. And if opposition is saying, like most Nigerians are saying, you put in a budget that is not looking too smooth and not smelling too rosy and trying to take care of yourself. No, I would not do that. While I am looking for better horizon, I will cut my coat according to my cloth. Okay. Thirdly, I will now then say, wait, the vehicle that I am riding in is not going to take me elsewhere. Nigeria is negotiable. Until we begin to look at all those things very critically, we begin to play a little bit of politics here and there. If Atiku were to have won this election, I am just curious to find out what he's going to be doing um, with this Sahel uh, Fulani headsmen okay, and all that kind of stuff. Sahel, before we go so, to the Sahel issue. I, 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 I'm just trying to make a point. Okay. I think Peter Obi is right okay. on this point. What I see is a situation where we haven't seen seriousness on the part of President Bolatino by way of example. Mm -hmm. But I see uh, a move towards to do certain things, very difficult to do, uh, it would have been difficult to do in any way. Nigeria is negotiable. Let's stop doing the things that we are we've been known to be doing. Let's let's look at way of looking at this constitution and taking very firm and hard decisions. Let's put policies that will help us control population. Let's put a lot of power into the hands of the local government. Who and that will mean that we have to review the constitution and the way it is, but we will not be able to know unless the opposition says, in this particular wise, this is what I will do. I will have just four ministers as an example. I will have just thirty six ministers. But the, the but opposition, even, sorry, go ahead. Okay, but even when uh, you know you're talking about policies and all that, we found out that even the president came out some time ago to say that as regards his entourage while traveling, he has to cut it by fifty percent and all that. And then you find out that if just going down to Imo State for inauguration, he went with above 50 personnel for that. You know, that is actually still spending money uh, that should have been for something better in Nigeria. Mm. We, you can remember that last year, his son also used a private jet for, uh, what's it called, a polo game. Mm. And all this actually had to boil down, bo bo you know, move down to, you know, the, when, you, when you look at some of the things that the president talked about, he found out that it's more like, I, don't, I wouldn't want to say he's... Um, He's painting 
the, the, the coffin that, you know, we'll know that termites is going to still eat and something like that. Because if, if you check some of the policies that the government or the, this particular government actually made, is what is making inflation to move from as of 22% during Buhari time to 28.9% now. And then we're still talking about policies. Are they not doing po these policies now that uh, the policies that the government is putting in place, are, are they really helping us out or not? Pulling out uh, uh, the, the, what's it called, the, the fuel subsidy just the day you were, because this was what led to him saying, uh, I think I deserve um, a Guinness World uh, record. He made that brag while he was uh, in, in Dubai, you know, because he was the one that said, this thing is going and it went out. And it, it, other, other uh, governments could not do that and all that. But, you know, Fina, I will just be very blunt with you. We must separate wheat from chaff. If by his lifestyle, personal example that you have quoted, why am I on your side? Obviously, and that's what I mean by character. You cannot, for the life of me, be saying that we all should be tightening our, <laughs> our belts and then we see you begin to live large. You begin to see your immediate projections looking at giving goods, giving goods are luxury goods and all that. We begin to see you um, getting ministers that we don't know you. There must be a reason why you are doing that. Getting ministers that were in the cesspit of some of the security issues we have. And you say, well, that's the kind of person that I, I, want, I want to have. Okay, if that is your choice and we are not seeing results, too bad. But on the policy, it is wrong economics. To begin to now then impugn it and say, for instance, uh, it did a policy and uh, inflation is going high. Of course we knew inflation was going to go high because we are not producing. If you are not producing, so whether it is A, B, C, or D, you will have to do something anyway. But you've got to have a bit of a human face. When you see that things are beginning to skyrocket, that is not the time we begin to now then see you in big babariga and the example that you gave, low hunger. Look, I am going to cut down on cost of um, okay, well, cost of travels just as a mini school. And then the next that we are going to see is allegedly, I still say allegedly, that you are not cutting to that level. Mm -hmm. It therefore says and I will now agree with uh, Mr. Peter Obi and you in this direction, that perhaps the people surrounding you, why do we have a chief of staff? Why do we have uh, secretaries to government? If you choose that these are the kind of people that can work with you and they will not be able to help you stream life, then they don't have a right to come to be there and you have to carry the, the, the can, the can of worms. But when it comes to looking at Nigeria, the way Nigerians are, looking at the production that we are, and seeing how things have been eroded over the years, including security, it's not the job to now pin it down on one man. And I am also saying, and I've said it a couple of times, Nigeria was bleeding. We had a choice to make, continue to bleed and die short term, or stem that and find a way to make sure you are able to assist, just assist marginally. There is no magic wand that you are going to use for you to be able to, to resolve that. Now, on the foreign exchange thing that we are talking about, economics are still debating. Is it the right thing or not the right thing? Should we go straight market forces? Or should we have market forces and still be able to tinker? I will go for market forces, which should, will not necessarily, because it will take uh, naturally the arbitrage and the middle percenters. But you still have to tinker with it in a way and manner that will still be able to get perhaps where we ordinarily would have gotten to in 14 years. We'll get there in about 20 years. So that is a move in the right direction. Okay. What I am expecting okay. is opposition should be, it should be much more potent. Vocal. In this, no, they are vocal. But 
the kind of vocal is still making a lot of, of sound. Mr. President, this is what I would have done in this wise. Example, Mr. President, so basically I give, will give not the administration ideas of what to do better. The way they will have, as a shadow government, that is what opposition is, is supposed to be. As a matter of fact, if I'm going to go to Imu, I will make sure that I do not have more than 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay. And if that happens now, behind me, I'm going first. to sack every other person. Okay. Right. Those now are the kind of things that I expect let's to stay, from, from Let's from stay on the travels for a bit. Uh, in seven months, we know that collectively, the president and the vice visited about 16 countries in seven months. Uh, collectively, the uh, particular daily, the punches were put, the number of times that both of them collectively spent outside Nigeria was put at 91 days. Right. In seven months. Yes. That's a, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time for a government uh, that, that is just coming, you know, into office to be spending outside the shores of the country. Oh, now, be three be, months be, and above. Over three, over three months. Yeah. Be for whatever reason. Uh, sourcing for uh, uh, FDIs or whatever it is. That's a lot of time. Uh, I want to I also look at it from, from, from this angle. From the time of Yaradwa, mm. from Yaradwa, let's keep uh, good luck. Uh, let's come to Buhari and then Tinubu. We've had our presidents go in and out. Musa Yaradra was going between Egypt and Saudi Arabia for treatment. Buhari had his own. Um, he was going to the UK most of the time. Tinubu has his, uh, his place in, in France. France. Is, age a, 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 is age a problem here for us now? In uh, seeing that those, some of those that we have elected into office from the Yaradra era into the Tinubu administration have had one reason touted to be health as you know major reason for them going outside the country spending more time outside the country than they should be spending within the country again so age here our again i like to compartmentalize um it's difficult to say for instance that um, Tinubu and shetima has spent more time outside in relative to whatever is supposed to be coming in by FDI, by <laughs> what uh, Google uh, technology <laughs> have said to happen, that will not happen like yesterday, is difficult and in your comparison. I also will need that you should go beyond the time of your work. I think essentially we should go to Obasanjo. When Obasanjo came in, number one, H was not necessarily on his side, especially gifted man in a special way. He may have his health challenges, but he's stuck and strong. He spent a lot of time going outside, doing quite a number of things similar to looking for human capacity development. He did not think that he would be able to get the kind of the Okunjo Wealers, Ezekwe Zilis, uh, just, just as two, two examples uh, that could come in and do his vision and mission. So, is age the issue? I would say no. Age cannot be the issue. The real issue is whether you are young or you are old, we have not laid our bed in a way that will help us take care of whether you are young or you are old, maybe to take care of your health. But the concomitants okay. of age seem to be affecting our leaders here. Well, I took it back to Obasanjo. Will you say age affected Obasanjo in any way? I will um, Atiku was his vice. Will you say it was age that affected them, that we had the kind of governance that we have? No. In my, in my honest opinion, I know that, yes, of course, we need much more younger and much more energetic. We've seen much more younger and much more energetic that have gone into government today, and we know where they are. So it's not so much the age but character. It's not so much age but vision. It's not so much the age but capacity to know how to do things. If you say this is how you are going to do, you know, 
example and people are shouting tina just mention one simple example here and to your charging it's not happening as a leader you should be so ashamed and the next thing that you should say why is this happening okay i said this is the way it should go okay i'm not changing my mind because of is this security reasons or whatever it is they'll come out and uh, let's see but a situation where you just keep mute your son is traveling on what, what did you call it and he's in the uh, and, and he's in that sort of doing what yeah. makes okay. no <laughs> sense i do not see for instance and please let me bury this here mm. now i do not see a crystal be doing that oh. i do not see okay and for, for lack of me uh, an article doing that maybe article will go to dubai and do a couple of things but i do not see that doing that and that's why we must put the feet of this president and say wait you may have some policies you may have a couple of things that we think might be good in the short term can we begin to think around them can we begin to now then say whatever it is that you have taken away from subsidy which has been said mm -hmm. take to humanitarian is it getting there if it's not getting there then let's stop it and then begin to to, 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 to carry our monkeys right. and face it squarely. Mr. Pure and simple. Now, 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 I want to stay with you on the statements made by uh, uh, former presidential aspirant of the Labour Party. Now, he said clearly that the allies are not willing to do the right thing. He suggests that in his statement, anyways, particularly the electoral umpire as well. Now, do you think and do you also share this stuff? That's one. Secondly, as a Nigerian, seeing all of this happen, mm. as it concerns us as a people, mm. what do you suggest that we start doing right to get all of these things stopped now and move forward to a better future? Elite consensus. Yes, I agree with Peter Obi and your statement that the elites are the problems of Nigeria, of course. And the religious leaders are also the problems of Nigeria, of course. Everybody wants to get in there and be able to now then find a way around it. And Peter Obi also has a constituency. Mm. He's a Christian and before he got in there, we knew how he went to his constituencies. He's not going to go get in there and pull them and begin to chop up their heads. No. He will have to now begin to do situation by personal example. And this is the difference. By personal example. That is the difference. I also agree with you that institutions have not worked the way they needed to work. You're just talking about um, INEC. Mm. Okay? So, how do we get people into INEC? How do we get carrying, cat carrying members into INEC? Who appoints INEC? So, let's get back into a template that um, Justice Wise has laid. It's there. We all know it's there. So, I expect, for instance, that what Peter Obi will be saying and what Atiku will be saying is that what I'll be doing, having given all what, and he made a statement that, you know, politics is over, beautiful statement, I will get back to the waste report and I will implement them to the letter. That is what I need to, be, to hear. Not, uh, well, um, you are not doing well, uh, this is not going on well. I'm making general statements. Look, we need to be in specific. It is going to be in agriculture. I, I see a situation where um, former Vice President Atiku is talking about security. His home state, amongst others, are not going on fine. Is there a blueprint that he has? Even within the states that are being controlled by him, how are they unveiling this? Look, I'm saying we should go beyond politics. But that goes okay. beyond that goes beyond the, the fact that there is a sitting governor, because that governor would possibly not want to take directives from a team. So why would he not want to take that as a PDP person? So PDP has no vision, has no mission. But no, there's a challenge when you sit and begin to point a finger for we always be pointing at you. Yes. Look, my point is that uh, criticism is easy. I can criticize. But when I get in there, or I should be able to demonstrate, for instance, that if I get in there, I will try and be equitable. I will say to myself that if I think a woman 
it's a better fit in this particular direction. I will put all my resources and power and influence to make sure I get that woman there. Okay. If it's going to be a youth, I get that youth there. Okay. If that person does not come from my stock, I mean, I'm talking of my, my, my religious faith or my ethnic background, I will get that person in there because we are looking at pan-Nigerian situation. And one of the ways to get that is look at this constitution and say this constitution is not working. This constitution cannot work. And you have to be very bold. You will not now be thinking of second term. Peter will be, if we were to be there, we will not be thinking of second term. Then look, let me make a marked difference. A, a, a difference like we had in the PRP, uh, uh, Balarabe Musa. He started doing the right things, but the, the establishment got him out of it. So if you are going to get me out of it, so be it. Okay. Okay. A lot of let things me, are happening in this country let me chime in, in a way that we only need bold men, men of character, men that will say we are going to do certain things and will be seen to be doing them. If right. they are not being done, if I, if I understand sack, you clearly, sack people around you if they are not doing what is right. Okay. If, if, I, if I understand family. you clearly, you're, you're saying that the opposition should profess solution to the problem. That is work of that opposition. Is, mm. The work of opposition is not... Um, to point out, to point uh, only to point out errors. Yes, the exchange rate then, is then, the exchange rate is going off the roof. There are certain things I think I, I, we start to do. I will look at this. I will begin to think. When, 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 when the campaigning was going on, yes, if you recall, yes. the ABC did not present a manifesto. The, no. What does that? What, what does that tell you now? Did not present looking, a, looking back, that, that's, that, that's news to me. I think did the all, ABC present a manifesto? Or did the ABC say? This is what we are going to do? Yeah, that was a roadmap, yes. All of them. And amongst others looking at the economy is that the Nigerian economy was down. And if are, as an example, talking about uh, petrol subsidy, all of them said petrol subsidy is <laughs> a monumental fraud. Not just on, from the manifesto. Mm -hmm. I was at outings where I saw them speak through these things. Okay. All of them without exception. Mm. Look, talk is cheap. No doubt about that. But to get there and do what is right, one, two, get there and now then see that certain things you didn't think was going to be possible. Have the courage and the will. So to now say, going, you going, are going to going stop forward, on going your forward track. Now, how, much, then, how much longer then, should, uh, should Nigerians give this administration for it to see um, results? How much longer? I will not talk about how long. I will look at how far. And my criticism of this present regime is that they are not leading according to character. Check that. I will begin to now then see people that will trust you. There is no trust. Okay. So I don't. I don't think I need all the give you. Uh, how many months do I need to give you? One of the things I will do as an opposition now. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, we don't think we are leading by example. Okay. Oh, yeah. We think right from your asshole rock, right from your wife being the, the first lady, right from your son being the first lady. Your son, for instance, has no business riding in private jets. But as we see it. That much, I will say. Because by the time I begin to say that, people now then, wait a minute, I think this guy is serious. You cannot, in one breath, say, I can't, I can't understand what my son is doing at the chamber. And then we still see him doing some of the, you said he was playing some, some games and all that. That is not seriousness. Mm. I need a bit of more seriousness. Okay. I need a bit of more soberness. All right. All right. You... And I also will continue to say Nigerians, things are not right. Things are not good. It's okay. Everybody around me that is not doing what is right. Yes, I'm listening to listen to them. And if I'm culpable... I'm not going to be dancing right, right. left and right. Let's, let's Mr. Mr. Akin, you were, you know, you were, you were of the opinion that uh, the opposition should not just be calling or be pointing out. You know, they should move forward to start telling the government what they should do. No, but we no, know no, that, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. That, that's not how I put it. Okay. How did you put it? How I put it is, if I think you look too, too <laughs> I mean, you dress too, too elaborate. Okay. I said right. no. no. What I will do. That's the way I say. What I will what do is, will. I am going to try not necessarily. 
I mean, you can say it, they may agree, they may not agree. Mm. What I have pro 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 <laughs> professed here, yeah. do you think they are going to take it? Do you think they are going to take it? it? You know, but you will not stop me from saying that they should take it. I will go beyond agonizing. I will begin to organize it. and do nice. things the way they now, do. Now, right. you, know, you know, before now, when good luck Jonathan was a president of the country, yes. you know, when we, that was of 2015, yes. uh, the likes of uh, when the, the president Buhari came in, the likes of Desani Madueke and others were dragged for corruption charges and so many other things, you know. Yes, yes. But now, the likes of uh, Minister of Work, David Omahi, and even Nuhu Ribadu have come up to say that the previous government or the previous government kept us where we are, the mid mention of the, the Buhari led administration, why is it that this present administration is not doing anything to persecute the people that their names actually have come up for, you know, in terms of uh, this, uh, the corruption charges? The president told us that he was the one that asked the governor of Central Bank to do the reprinting of the cash and all that. He took the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So why is it that it's only MFA lead that is being dragged and why is it that, you know, is it that they are doing the APC thing? I don't understand. Can you no. just have a maybe, well, they, well, so <laughs> maybe they are doing the APC thing. It could be that they are doing the APC thing. Uh, I, I'm sorry. But it still comes back to the courage and character I'm talking about. Mm. And it is not altogether true. It may be little or small. We have a Mefele mm. in the dock. We would like for you to keep this. Uh, what we are now saying is, and, and if I hear you well, mm. it should be Buhari that should be on the dock. Mm. I don't have a problem with that. If you have the courage to be able to do that, and in any case, without necessarily putting Buhari in the dock, the opinion out there is that we had a government. We had a government, we had a government that didn't do right. Mm. And like you rightly said, this one has now come in, it's now becoming like a paddy paddy thing. Mm. So as opposition, what I will now be saying, we have these 40 names or 45 names, bring them out and prosecute them. All right then. All right then. Let's, Name and let's, shame. Let's anchor this. That's this the point I am making. Okay. Right, <laughs> before we run out of time. Thank you so very much, Mr. Akinde. Uh, well, up next on VOP this morning, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger Republic, Quit Echoes. These and more when we return. Stay with us.